kickstart this Monday, I wanted to bring you guys some food for thought, a little bit of a discussion on some things I've been thinking about. We're going to use Sekiro Shadows Die Twice as the backdrop for a little bit of a discussion on what I've always personally referred to as sequel syndrome. I think we see this with a lot of big, long-running franchises, Call of Duty, Halo, Battlefield. They're constantly attempting to move on to the next thing while still holding on to some of those expectations. Those expectations that have been established by previous gameplay experiences and then set in stone by the people who have experienced them themselves. The fans, the player, the consumer, of course, who believes that Halo needs to be a certain way and Battlefield needs to be a certain way. These are essentially restrictions or boundaries that truly prevent the developer, the creators, from pushing in completely new directions. If you're going to use the namesake Battlefield, it better have a certain set of things that scream Battlefield. And that is what I've always referred to as sequel syndrome. And I think often when we talk about the lack of success for, you know, the 10th entry in a long running franchise, we don't really talk about, you know, fan fatigue, player fatigue. We don't really speak on that. We don't talk about the fact that maybe the game is actually really good, but people have been playing it in this certain specific way that screams that game for so long that there's just not really anything you can do to make it fresh or exciting again. New themes and slight modifications to gameplay just won't be enough, right? This is what I believe to be the true genius of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, of Bloodborne, and even if we want to get really crazy here, Demon Souls, as it became the first fantasy action RPG developed by From after they finished their time with Armored Core. Very much a studio that is always looking for ways to do new things that challenge the player in a new way, that give them new gameplay experiences, and that allow them to push away from those expectations that are typically established by long-running franchises. I think Sekiro makes so much sense right here, right now, this Friday, where it's about to release, when you consider how long the Souls franchise has been going for now. Three entries, plus the spinoff that is Bloodborne, which very much feels like it's doing a lot of what I'm going to talk about with Sekiro today. Bloodborne was like, hey, we're going to keep some of those core concepts from Souls games, but we want to do something a little bit new. We want a new theme, but we also want some new gameplay experiences. And I think Bloodborne did an incredible job of that. You know, it's it's so good at like being a Souls game while not really being a Souls game. And that allowed it to really offer up not just some new story elements, not just a new world and, you know, some new themes, but a new gameplay experience. I won't say that I ever felt Bloodborne was as substantially different as Sekiro is probably going to be to all of those old games. But nonetheless, I feel like it was a good demonstration of from, you know, breaking free of that sequel syndrome and just doing something new in all the ways they wanted to do it. And in a way that allowed them to subvert those typical set in stone expectations that have been built up over the years by the fans and by the players. So that's Sekiro for me. You know, it doesn't really matter if Sekiro is successful or not. I'm not here to tell you Sekiro is going to be an amazing game. What I'm here to say is that I believe it is the perfect step forward for a team that has spent so much time with one style of experience for so long now. I think Bloodborne was that initial step for Miyazaki, and now this is them going all the way and saying, okay, new theme, new setting, completely new gameplay experience. Like, we're still going to have our DNA because we're still making the game. We're not going to suddenly go make you know, a racing game in this case. We're not going to make the jump we made from Armored Core to Demon Souls this time around, but we're still going to give you an entirely new set of challenges. We don't want you to be able to bring any of your skill set from Bloodborne or from Dark Souls or Demon Souls over into Sekiro. This is new. This is different. Deal with these new systems. Get punished and die. Let us offer you a new challenging Souls hard difficulty experience not on the basis of us just making it harder for no reason whatsoever, but on the basis of us giving you something that is truly new and unexpected. That is such a beautiful and wonderful thing. And I'm so happy that From Software is in a position where they can do something like this. Because every other big AAA franchise out there has been forced to practically milk itself dry. To just go from the next sequel, to the next sequel, to the next sequel. When we look at some of those long-running franchises, I think the times when I've actually enjoyed them the most, when they've become most exciting and most fresh, even if it's the middle of their, you know, their existence, 
is when they've had a chance to kind of break that mold a little bit. Halo 3 ODST. And even a lot of the things that were done with Reach. But I think ODST is the big one for me. New ways of telling stories. Multiple character perspectives beyond what we've seen in the past with Halo. And just a new gameplay direction. Different or a lack of abilities because you're no longer a Spartan. Like, that was Halo doing that. And I think doing incredibly well with that. We can even talk Battlefield Hardline. Which I think also did a pretty damn good job of subverting expectations and still offering an experience that was decidedly battlefield but going in a new direction while fans didn't love it i thought it did a lot of really cool things and again sometimes you're not going to be successful but i still think it's nice to see developers have that chance to break free of those creative restraints i mean that's what they become over time you've got a bunch of individuals just doing the same thing the same thing the same thing I and mean, they wonder why so many people have left by over the years I mean, are you gonna make mass effect games for the rest of your life some people want new things in life it's the human nature especially when you're creating things creating the same thing day in and day out it's gonna lose the pleasure you're gonna lose the creativity you had at the start and i think that's what all of these long term long running franchises suffer from and i think from has always done a really good job of just like moving on you know that jump from from armored core to demon souls was for the most part from what i've researched miyazaki just being like oh vanish the rpgs that looks cool why don't we do that yeah we could do that let's do it right <laughs> Like, and I know that there's some deeper roots with, like, uh, Souls and the sort of games it goes, it pays uh, tribute to, I guess you could say. But still, I mean, that was a team making mech games, pretty difficult, challenging, rewarding mech games, who said, let's do a fantasy action RPG. And I'm so glad they did, because I can't wait to play Sekiro this Friday. I can't wait to have a whole new set of challenges and gameplay experiences that probably just would not be possible if this was Dark Souls 4, or Bloodborne 2, for that matter. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. My thoughts on the true genius of From Software and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys are interested in learning about Sekiro but not interested in picking it up Friday when the game releases, I will be streaming it all day. Stay tuned to the community tab for my channel here on YouTube, or you can follow me over on Twitter at Tony with an E underscore Mo to get updates on my latest and upcoming streams. We will be playing that game literally all day friday and probably throughout the rest of the weekend so if you want to see what it's all about maybe consider picking it up for yourself after that that will be the place to do it other than that thank you so much for watching and supporting the work i do here on the channel if you'd like to support it further you can head over to my patreon and consider becoming a patron over yonder other than that stay awesome have a great week and i will see you in the next one